Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to go over chapter 10, where we are going to go over e-commerce. So what do we mean by e-commerce? So from its name, it is electronic commerce or where we do transact business through the web or through the internet. It all started in 1995 when Netscape.com started to accept the first advertisement, online advertisement um, on its platform. And that was in 1995. And since then, e-commerce e grew exponentially. Companies that survived the dot-com bubble um, and those companies include Google, Amazon, uh, Expedia, uh, and uh, just kind of to name a few on eBay. Uh, those companies that survived that dot, dot com bubble are thriving right now and they are the largest in the world. And uh, so the new e commerce, it is social, that it's interactive, uh, it's engaging. Right uh, through social media, you can get feedback. You can read about feedback. Now it's it's mobile. It's through uh, mobile phones, mobile uh, uh, gadgets like uh, tablets, uh, and and mobile phone, mobile uh, computers as well, laptops, and it is local. So the whole world has become local uh, or global village, right? So uh, it moved from uh, desktop to smartphone. Um, right now, smartphones are constituting the majority of um, e-commerce. So why e-commerce is different? E-commerce is different uh, from the brick and mortar in several ways. One of them is ubiquity. So e-commerce is ubiquitous. It is everywhere and anytime. Right, so you're not limited to uh, working hours. So, for example, uh, you know, some stores they might close by seven p.m. So, e-commerce is open twenty four seven, and it is everywhere. Wherever you go, you can still access e-commerce from your office, from your phone, on the driveway, on the on the train, wherever you are, you still can uh, transact using e-commerce. Right. And transaction cost has reduced uh, as a result uh, of ubiquity of e-commerce. That means uh, if you are searching for a product and you are interested in a product, you don't need to travel to go and check that product or buy that product from a certain location that is far away and take time off from your work um, uh, and, uh, and travel and so on. So now you can buy it from with a click from your phone. So global reach, uh, that means products can, you can buy products from anywhere in the world. Uh, personally, I bought a wallet from Canada uh, through e-commerce and it exists only in Canada. So I bought it from there. I personally also consume honey from Yemen and that honey is produced in Yemen and it is sold by a person from Kuwait and it is shipped from New Jersey. So you can see kind of the, the globe of the global reach e-commerce can, uh, can, can provide. And then universal standards. So the internet is universal. Uh, the same standards are used in the United States, in China, Russia, all over the world. So it makes it easier um, you know, for e-commerce to thrive. Richness. Uh, so richness, what we mean here by richness is rich medium of communication. So we have rich medium of communication, which is face-to-face -face is the maximum uh, richness. And then we have lean, which is text uh, that is the, the lowest. So now uh, e-commerce provides rich medium of communication, uh, which is a combination of videos, audios, text messages, right? Uh, but it's not as rich as the brick and mortar where you go and you touch the product, you feel the product, you smell the product. That's the rich, the ultimate richness of, um, of the medium of communication, right? Uh, but now e-commerce is stepping up. So video is kind of the, the highest. It's still considered rich, right? Medium of communication. So there is a difference between rich versus reach, right? 
So reach means, uh, which is the one that we talked about, global reach. So reach is you can reach the maximum number of consumers all over the world, right? E-commerce enables reach. Uh, uh, however, brick and, board, uh, brick and mortar doesn't have that ability to for reach, right? We only you can reach only your local market, but the global market with a, a local brick and mortar it is limited, right? So uh, that's what we mean here by richness. E-commerce enables richness by combining video, audio, and text messaging. So e-commerce is also enables interactivity. It's interactive. So unlike TV and radio and newspapers, where only uh, there is only one way of communication. So the TV is telling you what to do or giving you that information, and radio is telling you that information as a consumer, right? And and newspaper is telling you, but it doesn't give the chance of the consumers to interact with those, right? You can't click on, for example, on a TV or radio or ask questions, of, right? Uh, or the newspaper. So e-commerce provide this two way of communication. So you receive the information and then you can interact with that information. You can click on it, search more about it, talk to a, a chat uh, robot, for example, live chat or call. So you can do a lot of things, like and share. So there are uh, interactivity. Uh, you are engaged as a consumer with the, with the, with the product and, and the merchant and the seller. So information density, um, so what we mean here, it is uh, great price and cost transparency. So the consumer knows the price um, and, 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 and the supplier knows the cost of the price. And, and, and you, so now information is more transparent through e-commerce and also some businesses provide that uh, price matching, for example, Best Buy, uh, for you as a consumer, you prices are transparent. So if you find the product in Amazon that is cheaper than what uh, Best Buy is offering, you can show them, and then they will match that price and sell it to you with that lower price, right? Uh, so that's kind of the benefit of uh, information density through e-commerce. It enables also price discrimination. So what do we mean here by price discrimination? Is that uh, a seller can discriminate through e-commerce, discriminate with the prices for different people with different characteristics, different uh, uh, zip codes. They can um, change their price, or you know, they can price a person from from this zip code differently from a person from another zip code, right? And it enables that. Uh, so that's what we mean here by price discrimination. Maybe sometimes it depends on the, the type of computer you have, whether it is an Apple phone or an Apple um, Mac, MacBook or versus a PC, uh, whether it is, uh, and then they can discriminate against, uh, you know, based on that. Uh, what I mean, discriminate the price, meaning that they price you differently. Uh, and buying and selling, it's all about you agreeing or not agreeing to buy. So. They are not going to force you, but they, but that's kind of enables businesses to, to thrive by price discrimination. And then we have this concept of personalization versus customization. So personalization here refers to the communication, personalized communication. When they, the website or the e-commerce addresses you with your first name, oh, welcome, Murad, or good morning, Murad, uh, here is what uh, we have for you uh, today. Right, that's personalization, right? Uh, as for customization, e-commerce enables customization of the product. So in other words, as a consumer, you can customize your your new car that you wanna buy and order. For example, whether you want the leather seats to uh, or the, the, the seats uh, cover to be leather or not, whether you want them to be red or or, uh, or aluminum or whatever different colors that you are interested in. So you get the idea. Uh, customization is related to the product. Personalization is related to the communication, right? And then social technology, that's uh, 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 social media. You can actually uh, uh, generate content through videos. You can share your experiences through uh, social networking as well.
So uh, the internet and digital markets have changed the way companies conduct their business. It's not only brick and mortar. Now they have a combination, e-commerce, brick and mortar. For example, Walmart, they have brick and mortar and they have also walmart.com where they they are trying to compete with Amazon. Just kind of to, to, um, to give you an idea. And then um, information asymmetry is reduced in e-commerce. So what we mean here by asymmetry, meaning that one, the buyer or the seller, one of those has more information than the other. So this person or this entity that has the, the most information has the most bargain, bargaining power, right? So uh, uh, e-commerce reduces that asymmetry. So it makes it symmetry, symmetric. So it's the same level, right? Information is the same now through e-commerce, not asymmetric. And um, menu costs, so through e-commerce, you can easily uh, change the menu costs. Uh, you don't need actually to have menus. And, and it, it's almost uh, not costly to change the prices on the menu. Search and transaction costs are reduced. So uh, we talked about the search and transaction. So instead of going to the mall, taking off from your work and driving your car, so you are spending efforts and time and money in order to go search for a product or transact with that product uh, if you go to a brick and mortar or physically. But now with e-commerce, you can actually uh, mitigate that cost. So uh, e-commerce enabled dynamic pricing, uh, dynamic pricing. So what we mean here by dynamic pricing is like, like uh, what we talked about earlier, the price discrimination. So dynamic pricing is that if there is high demand for a product, you will notice uh, that it, it will change based on demand, right? So for example, uh, you are buying a flight, you know, uh, to any, any, any location, you will find the price, for example, is around $200 today. And then during, depending on the time of the day, depending on the day of the week, depending on, you know, the type of computer, if you have a Mac versus a PC, the price will change. So that's what we mean here by dynamic pricing uh, through e-commerce. So e-commerce has this problem of delayed gratification when it comes to physical products, right? If you buy a product from Amazon, it will arrive at tomorrow at the fastest or after tomorrow, right? Uh, so that's kind of delayed gratification. Um, however, if you are ordering an electronic or a digital product, like for example, music, a software, a video, you can get it instantly, right, through uh, e-commerce. So this inter uh, intermediation. So e-commerce enables this intermediation. So what do we mean by that? Intermediaries, they are the, the person in the middle between the buyer and the seller. Right, so or the manufacturer. So uh, instead of, uh, so in other words, e commerce can eliminate the distributors and the retailers and keep only the manufacturer and the seller. A seller can buy directly from the manufacturer. So this is an example of how the price uh, per sweater, if you buy it through distributors and retailers as a customer, it's going to be around $50. But if you buy it directly from the manufacturer, it is going to be around Twenty dollars. That's kind of the cost. So you are eliminating uh, the middle person. So e-commerce. So digital goods, from their names, they are digital products such as software, videos, pictures, uh, just to name a few, or content. Uh, cost of producing the first unit is almost the entire cost of product. So in order to build a software, for example, whatever the cost for that software. Uh, you will need to build it only once and then you can just make copy easily. Um, again, the cost of delivering over the internet is very low, especially for digital goods, uh, like uh, such as music, videos, or software, right? Uh, all you need to do is put it in a place where people can download it in a website or through um, personal cloud or cloud computing, yeah. uh, like Dropbox, for example. I personally bought a software that uh, the, the the seller provided me a link to a Dropbox 
that they use to store that software so I can download it and they provide me with the key for that uh, uh, software. And then marketing costs, uh, again, still remains the same, whether it is digital good or not. And the pricing is highly variable, so that means you can easily change the price uh, through e-commerce or for digital goods. So there are some industries that are undergoing uh, revolutionary changes, such as publishers record uh, labels, the, uh, cable TVs, and, uh, and, and, and music, and so that's the record labels. So you, you labels, you get the idea um, newspapers, uh, Hollywood, Hollywood movies. So they are uh, getting affected by this uh, phenomenon. So types of e-commerce. So we have three types of e-commerce. So we have business to consumer. This is like the Amazon, eBay, where consumers buy from a business. And then business to business. This is where Businesses buy uh, from other businesses, and this includes uh, an example of that is Alameca, and there is another web, uh, web, uh, website called mcmaster or macmaster.com. Uh, consumer to consumer, this is where you have uh, auctions like eBay, Craigslist, you know, Facebook marketplace and uh, just gonna have to name a few of the examples where consumers can buy from other consumers e-commerce also can be categorized by platform in this case uh, mobile platform versus disk platform so m-commerce so e-commerce business models include uh, portal so this is where uh, a portal provides an entry access to to the web uh, for the consumer and provides complementary features such as customized news, emails, and this example of a portal is Yahoo and AOL. So, uh, and then e-tailer uh, business model, e-commerce business model is uh, where sellers can sell physical products to consumers through through the internet or through e-commerce. So this example would be Amazon, eBay, right? Uh, content provider. So those are, they, they build content. So as, as Wall Street Journal, for example, they have content and they get uh, their revenue from advertising or through subscription. <clears throat> so uh, Wall Street Journal, uh, is an example, uh, Netflix, Hulu, uh, Disney Plus, just can't have to name a few, and iTunes also from Apple, they provide content. And then uh, transaction broker, this is like eTrade.com, where they, they uh, charge fees for enabling transactions between um, seller buyer and seller, right? Uh, and then we have eBay also is another example of transaction broker. And then we have market cre uh, creator. This is where um, a business provides an environment or a, an, a digital environment for buyers, buyers and sellers to uh, set their own prices or to uh, uh, and 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 uh, to transact in other words. So an example of a market creator would be Uber uh, and uh, actually uh, Airbnb, just kind of to name a few, right? And then we have service provider. Uh, service provider, they, it's a firm where it, it provides application as a service. So example of this is the G Suite, for example, or Dropbox providing uh, storage application as a service, all right? Uh, so this is what we mean here by service provider uh, business model. Uh, community provider. Community provider, this is where it, it provides a place where people can meet 
with each other. And this is an example of it is social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and just to name a few. And then we have <clears throat> e-commerce revenue models includes advertising. So uh, yeah, uh, Google, YouTube, Facebook, they get their revenue through advertising. Sales, that's Amazon, for example, um, they get their revenue through sales. Subscription, this is like Netflix, uh, Hulu, they get their revenue through subscription. Uh, free or freemium, this is when um, the firm provides their product for free or uh, a smaller version of their product for free. And then they, they charge premium for additional features or more advanced features, right? Um, and an example of this is Grammarly, for example, it has a free version of it, but in order to get access to advanced features, you will need to pay premium. Um, and the goal of this free product or premium is to get you to use the free version of the product or the service, and then to convert you later on into a premium, to pay premium. But uh, most of the music platforms, the free music platforms, they don't succeed in making profit from converting free uh, customers into premium customers. But they make up for that with the advertising fees that uh, uh, they make. And then we have transaction fees. So this is uh, like eBay, for example, if you buy products through eBay, eBay or Expedia, they charge uh, third party or they are third party, they charge the seller, for example. And then we have affiliate. Affiliate, those are uh, websites or content that provides or redirect uh, customers to other websites where they can buy products from them. So e-commerce also uh, enabled long tail marketing. So in other words, it provides access to a large uh, range of audience, right? So um, in other words of reach, it increases the reach for marketing. And then uh, different marketing and advertising formats include the search engines where you can pay, for example, to Google and they can place your ads at the beginning of uh, the top of the page or uh, through search engines and then display ads. Those includes banners that are pop-ups that show up when you uh, get into a website. And then video and rich media. Uh, on YouTube, and then email, they are more targeted tools um, for, for marketing. So behavioral targeting, this is a very interesting concept, <clears throat> which refers to tracking consumers or customers' uh, web usage, and it tracks thousands of clicks of um, a user in order to understand their interests and their intention. If they figure out the interest of that individual, then they can target market this person with products that they are interested in and they can, uh, you know, um, um, make money out of it, right? So then uh, we have also programmatic ad buying. So this is a very interesting concept and very important concept. Programmatic ad buying, meaning that the advertising emphasis will be different, for example, for male versus female, for adults versus children, right? Uh, so the ad will be programmatic, for example, General Motors, Chevy. If the user is female, they are going to emphasize Chevy's safety and utility. If uh, the user is a male, so that ad is going to be programmatically changing to emphasize the power and the toughness of the, of the, of the car. 
And then we have native advertising. So native advertising where the content and the advertising, they are beside, it's very close to each other. You can't actually differentiate. So an example that I have seen recently is um, about the Hyperloop company of Elon Musk in California. So they showed a video about students uh, that have been competing to build the fastest uh, vehicle or, or um, for the Hyperloop. And uh, this uh, group or the group of students from Spain won the, with the first uh, award or the first team uh, for their design that was the fastest. And the story was about the students and how they succeeded and uh, how it was com competition. But that video is about the company for the Hyperloop. So you get the idea. It is kind of mixing the story uh, or the content with the advertising. And this is an example of the clicks that is uh, collected about a user online. Right, so there might be some benefits from some of them from, from a business perspective. For example, this this customer arrived uh, from the Yahoo portal at two thirty p.m. So this allows the business to, you know, determine staffing for customer service centers during that time, right? And then it also says that the customer lingered on the home page, so which might suggest that trouble navigating on the website, so they need to go and check if the website is working properly. So this is what we meant here by personalization, is welcome back, Steve. Uh, Sarah, here are the items uh, you want to bid on. So you got the idea, the medium of communication or personalization refers to communication. Social commerce and uh, social networking marketing. Social media is one of the fastest and growing marketing methods. And uh, social e-commerce based on digital uh, social graph. So what we mean here by social graph is when you, you as um, or the social network graphs where you are in the middle and then you have friends nodes to a friend and a friend of a friend. So it is, it's a network basically, right? And that's uh, what many companies use. For example, you might be sitting, like for me personally, I was I was sitting with a, uh, with a person that I met yesterday at a party. And, and today in the morning, I got a notification from Facebook that this, you might, you might add this person to your Facebook. And uh, so you got the idea here uh, that's uh, based on the social graph. They knew that I was there and this person is a friend of my friends and, and then you know, also geolocation that we'll talk about later on has that suggestion as well. So uh, features of social media is the news feed is based on your interest, based on that uh, uh, filing that we talked about earlier, timelines based on uh, events that happened in the past and related, and then the social sign on. This is a very important concept. So you might have bought a product or a, bought an, an app uh, on your phone, or you have uh, subscribed to a new service, right? And then when you buy that product or that service or a new social media account, right? And then the, uh, or, you know, you got a, a, into Grammarly, for example. They require you to sign in, right? Or to uh, to uh, to sign in or to create an account. And then they will give you an option. You can sign in with your Facebook account, with your Google account. So that's what we mean here by social sign on. You don't have to create uh, insert all of your information, your first name, your last name, address, your email, your phone number, all of that. All they give you an option, okay, in order to have access to sign in for Grammarly, you can just uh, uh, sign on using uh, your Facebook account or LinkedIn account. 
So, and the purpose of that is to get access to your Facebook account profile so they can benefit from that from marketing perspective. And then collaborative shop, shopping. So this is when you, uh, uh, you are inter interested in buying a product and then you post on Facebook, for example, or Twitter, for those who bought this product, what do you guys think? And then in other words, you uh, you get opinions of others and recommendation from others about your shopping. And then network notification, this is when you like something, your friends get notified that you have liked this builder, for example, on Facebook. And since you like that builder, that means you trusted that builder. And, and if a friend is interested in building, they will say, well, yeah, I need to check that person. The, that builder because my friend liked that builder. Just get as uh, just an as an example of network notification, and then we have the social search, which is recommendations. Uh, for example, you can put a review there, and uh, and reviews are basically either praise or not um, or displeasure of the service, and you get recommendation from there. So uh, one thing that I wanted to uh, focus in this slide is the wisdom of the crowds. So the wisdom of the crowds is uh, relating or uh, is uh, referring to the to the idea that the crowd would have a better judgment about uh, an idea or a product than the opinion of only one person or a group of experts, small group of experts, right? So in other words, this suggests that the wisdom of the crowds is that firms, they need to consult with, with customers before, uh, in order to succeed with their products, right? Rather than relying on only in, on individual opinion uh, or certain expert opinion, right? And uh, as a result of this wisdom of crowds, uh, several companies have been reaching out to their customers and asking them for ideas for design and running some competition uh, in, in order to get uh, their customers interactive and uh, participate. And then crowdsourcing, this is again related to the wisdom of the crowds, you uh, outsource your design to your customers as a company, for example, BMW uh, uh, requested from their customers opinion about a certain design of the car. Uh, so crowdsourcing includes also kickstarter.com is a, a crowdsourcing company or platform that provides uh, customers or individuals with access to fundraise for their uh, startup companies, right? So what are the role of uh, uh, M or mobile commerce in business and what are the most important M commerce applications out there? So uh, main areas of growth is mass market, market retailing, Amazon, eBay, sales of digital content, uh, in-app sales to mobile devices. Um, and uh, mobile commerce is growing very fast, almost reaching 45% of all e-commerce. And uh, location-based services and applications. So they are used by 74% of smartphone owners and uh, based on the GPS map services. So geosocial services, uh, it tells you where your friends are meeting and geo-advertising tells you what shops are nearby and that's Google Maps for example and geo-information services tells you the price of a house you are passing by and other mobile commerce services include financial account management like banks credit card companies so you can buy your your bills through um, through your mobile bank account. Uh, you can transfer money through your mobile um, mobile bank account. You can, uh, through deposit, 
checks through your mobile phone uh, app, um, mobile advertising marketing. So Google and Facebook are the largest markets for advertising uh, on mobile phones or mobile products, uh, mobile devices. And the ads are embedded in games, videos, and mobile apps. So over 47% of the top retailers have mobile commerce um, presence or websites. So the three main types um, of mobile app payments, they include the near field communication. So this is based on the RFID. Remember the RFID that we talked about in a previous chapter refers to uh, RF radio frequency identification chips, right? So uh, the near field communication payment, Apple, uh, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, QR code, and peer-to-peer -peer payment systems such as Venmo, Zelle, Cash Apps, I'm just kind of to to uh, to name a few. So, what are the issues must be addressed when building an e-commerce presence? So first, you need to decide what is your business objective. Do you want to increase your market share? Do you want to increase your profitability? And then you need to develop e-commerce presence map. And that's the most important thing. So what we mean here by uh, e-commerce presence uh, map is four areas. And those four areas include the website. You must have a website. You can, you can start actually with the, the free Google map uh, or Google websites uh, that are provided for free. And then you can expand from there. But website is a must and email is a must social media presence is very important even accounts so where you can keep your audience uh, engaged at least once a week uh, posting some related posts of your products and your or your success your activities your events and then offline media so offline media is very important although we are talking about e-commerce but offline media can redirect, can be used, like for example, flyers, um, newspapers, ads, um, and and uh, and uh, brochures, and so on, or billboards. Right? They should have uh, links where they can you can take them to the, your website, to your email, to your social media, where they uh, people can learn more about your product. And this is what we mean here, websites, for example, they have to have a traditional platform for websites, uh, mobile, it, your website has to be mobile compatible, tablet compatible, and traditional, meaning like a PC or, or a laptop compatible, right? Uh, so that's what, and then email, social media, and offline media, print and TV and radio, right? So, uh, those are that's all that I wanted to cover for this week, and I will see you uh, later.